Right, night discourse, a lot of bullshit. Um, obviously, it, it, it again, clever trailer released, everyone was attacking each other with opinions. So I stopped crying about him because he should be broken, then he wasn't broken. Don't care about that. That's the reason I'm making this video. That's the reason I'm making it sooner than I would have done. I, I've had this video planned since like fucking Coa 7. Right. So, is the game hunter sided, survivor sided? Neither, it's balanced. What statistics or like rank shit am I going to show you? Nothing. I'm not trying to change anyone's opinions. I'm just giving mine. Um, if I'm trying to change opinions, I will obviously, you know, bring statistics and shit like that. But like, this is just a fucking rant video on like how I feel about the game. So look at survivors. Kind of shit. Quite strong, but counter by today's matter. Shit. Strong. Strong. Shit. Um, you know, best rescue in the game for six years. Strong character. Strong character because the global portal is fucking overpowered. Obviously, her short passages don't do shit. Her kite is rubbish, but her the global portal is what makes her strong. Um, this person, this person, were both recently used in IVS. People say that they're both bad. I don't think that's true. I think that they both had their uses. They may not be the best against operating on Ivy, but especially forward is still good against most hunters. Um, mechanic is obviously, obviously mechanic has been the tie hunter for it, tie survivor for ages. Right. Shit. Kind can be used, but like not really. Strong, but countered by current today's meta. Strong character. Uh, this person's a strong character, but obviously, you know, his kite's weak, but like the support he gets from his owl, the, uh, obviously the um, extra hit can be good against quite a lot of characters. That's why he's still used today. We've got the Psy King himself, and Barma. Obviously, in Barma, like, easily able to get ties. You play him on like big maps, round two, round three. You just play him in rank on any map, you just, you'll probably get a tie. This guy keeps falling in and out of the meta, but right now I'd say he is definitely in the meta. He is quite a strong survivor. He's quite solid. He's got um, he's got a fairly spammy item that he can use. It's quite strong against to a lot of hunters. Uh, it's quite a powerful item. He's used against Ivy, I believe, to like push her away. Um, he's 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 just a solid character. He's a strong character. This person's shit. Um, this person, good luck chasing them. They're a good rescuer, good kiter. But arguably one of the best kite is because you can't fucking hit him while he's on the pig. Strongest kite in the game. Strongest rescue in the game. This person's a strong character. That's it, they're a strong character. Obviously they've got their hearing, they've got that's a really powerful support ability. That ability alone has kicked Dream Witch out of the meta. As, as well some other things as well, but like that's one of the reasons Dream Witch fell out of the meta, because Barmaid ended up being good. This guy's not meta, however, he's not even that good. However, he has been used in recent tournaments with good results, um, which I like. It shows that you can bring off meta characters into the tournament against today's meta, and they can still do well. Obviously, this guy is like, he's a rescuer. He's not the best rescuer, however, um, he's got like four shovels, essentially, that he can use. So he's quite strong to um, in chase. However, you know, in terms of rescue, there's better alternatives. This person is not the best decoder. There are best alternatives, such as Lawyer. Well, the Lawyer's counter by today's meta. This guy, not so much, which is why you'll see this guy used. This person, again, would be an amazing S-tier survivor if Opera Singer Ivy and Nightwatch didn't exist. If those three didn't exist, she would be um, up there. She'd be used a lot more. She's still a strong character. She's just countered by today's meta. This person's really strong. His synergy with Embalmer is fucking insane. Like, just rescue him right 100% and use a coffin on him. So he gets the full minute on the chair, then he gets a coffin as well, like that's just the same. His kite's pretty good, um, he's, he's very solid against um, a lot of hunters. Um, that no rescue after half thing that he has is really a really underrated part of him. He's really strong for having that. Obviously this guy would be a lot stronger if um, Opera Singer Ivy didn't exist. He's good, he's just not good against today's meta. I feel like we need to clarify that as a factor, rather than just calling a character bad because they can't do well against Opera Singer Ivy. Because this guy is a good character, he just can't do as well against Opera Super Ivy. Patient, obviously one of the strongest characters in the game, can be used as a pseudo rescuer, like a pseudo merc. Um, similar to an uh, aeroplanist in that respect. Aeroplanist also being strong. 
This guy was used against Opsin quite a bit when he first came into the tournament. Not so much anymore now Ivy's here, however he, he still can be used against Opera Singer. And um like he's he's still a decent character, he's just not one of the uh, hard meta characters that you see round one, round two anymore. This person's not good. This person's quite good now. This person's quite shit now. This is one of the strongest characters in the game by far. I don't think I've seen some people say she fell off, I've seen some people say she's weak. To that I say, how have you come to that conclusion? The only hunters she didn't do well against is Gamekeeper and Disciple. Gamekeeper obviously played like once every blue moon nowadays. You don't see him too much. This is talking about tournament. Um, so yeah, you can pretty much play Antiquarian safely. She's still banned a lot, she's still picked a lot. I'm quite still good. Even against Gamekeeper you can still play against him. Um, same with Disciple. Disciple also kind of counters her, however... We've seen her five Cypher Kite Disciples in tournaments before. I don't think she's a bad character at all. I think she's one of the best characters in the game. Um, I'm, I'm not sure why people are now suddenly saying she's bad. This guy is similar to Postman. He's bad, but he was played in recent tournaments to a good, and like, get, got good results. The reason he's played is because against Ivy, he can get out the circle faster with a speed boost. I think that's it. I think obviously he's really not great. There's much better alternatives to playing to uh if you want to play decoder. However, you know, in a nice balanced meta we were able to see weaker survivors being brought up into teams and play around them and have them utilized well. So I like that. This person kinda of does it all but doesn't do it all too well. Obviously she can kite, her kite isn't that great, she can uh, rescue, her rescue isn't that great. And yeah, well, I mean, it's it's fine because she did technically guarantee the rescue. However, that's not really like too important nowadays. Um, because obviously you just got first officer, you got Merc. Um, so this person could be used against Opera Singer and Ivy, but like, I, there's better alternatives, and that's why she isn't used. People will tell you that this guy fell off. I will tell you he has not fallen off because he hasn't. He is still a strong character. The one nerf that got to him didn't really change much about him, it's not like killed him off. He's still a strong character, um, he, very strong, he's still, you know, it's him, Patient and Merc, those three are kind of like interchangeable roles basically. It's like Merc obviously being a bit stronger, however this guy and Patient, interchangeable. This guy's very good, this is not really talked about, but I think this can be, um, like, if, if he uses it on a Cypher, I think that alone can be pretty good. Well, obviously, it's not it's nothing game-changing, but, like, that, that minor buff can... That minor buff can be, um... What's, what's the word I'm looking for? That, that minor buff can be, um... Not game-changing, but, like, it can help out a lot. It can make life easier for people. And, obviously, this debuff that he has is, like, countered by fucking horse fly effects, so... Then we've got the person with the most broken, busted, fucking overloaded kit in the game that people insist that she's bad because I'm convinced that the only reason people call her bad is because they can't play her. Because how are you calling one of the strongest survivors in the game bad? Her antiquarian. Antiquarian, fair enough. Antiquarian is a bit of difficulty in playing her. This person, you press a button, you get to the other side of the map, and then when you're in your slowdown, you stand behind a pallet so Hunter can't hit you. People think that this um, four seconds slowdown kills her. It doesn't. It really doesn't. This 4 second clone is nothing. If you use your ability right, it will do nothing. If you use your ability to like loop around an area still, you're gonna, and just stay looping around like a shit area, you're going to get hit on in that slowdown. If you use it and you die out in the open with the slowdown, you're going to get hit. If you use it properly and use it to transition properly, you won't get hit. If you use it to like cross the map to make a rescue sooner, well, you'll get hit, but it doesn't matter, you've got the distance. This can be used, this distance is amazing, this obviously counters Ivy, because Ivy's um, final presence um, is reliant on um, you staying in the circle for as long as possible and getting the uh, 40, she can avoid that. She can also, aside from the speed boost, count, um, cancel the cooldown of other survivors' items, including herself, so she can use her speed boost again. This is quite good. Um... Now, there is something which no one talks about. Each survivor can be inspired two times. This doesn't really matter too much. Most survivors, um... They don't have, like, what's it called? Recharging items. They have, um... It's like, what's it called? Like, patient hook, perfumer, like, like stuff like that. Like, items. Like, you've got, like, a certain amount of... Yeah, that's it. You've got, like, a certain amount of items. 
So this this uh, little each side can be inspired by two times it doesn't matter. We've got one of the most amazing supports in the game. Um, obviously, this the mini speed boost that you get is quite good. The excited, where you get um, revived after being knocked down. Um, really fucking good. Like people call this bad. If you're able to kite for like. Oh, what is it? You, if you're able to kite for like, um, like 20, 30 seconds, which a lot of people can do, then you'll get this up, right? And because of the way its cooldown works, it will stay up after her cooldown. The cooldown is 8 seconds, the snacks last for 8 seconds before disappearing. No, 10 seconds for disappearing, right? So once that's on cooldown, you can just start it back up again and I'll have the 45 snacks again. I think that is ridiculous. And some people think it's bad. I think it's a really good support. And obviously, to, you know, to balance her out, she's got 10% slow decoding speed. Obviously, this kills her off. She's now super weak now. Same tier as Enchantress. But you, people call her bad. She's not bad. She's good. She's used against Opposite and Ivy quite a lot. She's really good survivor. Don't, don't let anyone tell you she's bad. This guy, I liked his design on release because obviously it was high risk, high reward. You use your item at the cost of your health and then you can tank a full hit, right? Obviously, and then he had a good debuff to counter as well. He was good on release. He, he wasn't broken, but he was good. He was used against Opposing and Ivy in tournament. After a nerf from his release, he was still used. Right, this debuff was a good debuff. It was like giving an actual downside. And then they go and buff him. So now Hermit's shared damage doesn't do anything against him anymore. And he now can take a Terra Shock and still be on half health to use another instance of the puppet. Why have they done this? Because someone's been crying that he's not strong enough and they fucking listened to whoever said that. I have no idea. I have no idea why they thought it was necessary to buff them. However, I do know they buffed him because they look at tournament and rank, not just tournament. So, um, yeah, I think it's a stupid buff, but I'm not going to say more on it. This guy is the epitome of good character design. He is strong. He does not feel broken to play or to play against, but he is strong enough. He's a solid fighter. He's got some support, he's got some um, solo fight, he's got some rescue potentially even. He's got it all right. He's he the epitome of good slime design. There's a new tech against dive where you put the ball down on the side for the gate and you're able to decode it without her being able to sleech onto you. That's quite good. That's why he's been the picked or bans all at all times these days. He's a really solid survivor. I like this survivor. This is the perfect survivor as well. This person obviously released shit. The new buff um, made her kite actually pretty good. Um, her kite is now decent, like she's a fairly good kite now, dare I say it. The only thing that makes her bad is this rescue debuff, this is why we probably won't see her be used in tournaments, this rescue debuff kind of kills her off. The Cypher stealing is also a bit iffy, however most of the issues I handled her on release have been fixed now. She is now, um, she's now pretty good, like, in terms of kiting. Obviously we've got Lucky Guy and Lucky Guy used in tournaments to get the uh, mech bot and the uh, coordinator gun, so he can kind of be like a combination of the two characters. He's not a good character at all, but uh, he's used in tournaments because, again, weaker characters are able to be used in tournaments because it's the balanced game, balanced meta, and we're able to see weaker characters being used. And obviously we've got Toy Merchant, obviously the Tatterbolt, one of the strongest map dependent, sure, but it is one of the strongest support items in the game. Uh, it's game changing, it can add like literally extra 30 seconds to someone's kite. Like bare minimum, it's fucking, it's fucking insane. It's it's such a good item. But obviously, psychologist, one of the most easy to play fucking characters in the game. You just can tank three hits. You can um, heal someone from across the map using Wi-Fi. It's it's quite strong. Now, if you look at these survivors, right, we've got twenty three strong. You can go back and count through them if you want. We have twenty three strong survivors who are used in um who can be used in tournament, right? And this is ignoring map dependency. Um, so yeah, 23 strong, 23 strong survivors, so like, I'm not going to say they're all broken, some of them are broken. However, there are still 23 survivors who are quite strong. There's also a 9 additional survivors, so characters like Mech, Forwards, um, Composer, Postman, shit like that. And... Now these these people can be played in tournaments. They're weaker. How, they're weaker characters, obviously. However, they can be played in tournaments. They can be utilized in tournaments, and they can be utilized well. Right? We would not have nine weaker characters being played and utilized in tournaments if this game was hunter-sided. Now let's move on to the hunter side, and let's just look, take a look 
at how good the hunters are. Shit. Shit. Ty Hunter with win potential nowadays. Shit. Ty Hunter with some small win potential nowadays. Same as Spider. Shit. Shit. Too many counters to be any good nowadays. He's shit. Shit. Fell off, she's now a Ty Hunter. Kind of a Ty Hunter, same as Dream Witch. Shit. Ignore the skin. I don't have that S skin, that's just an illusion. Um. This is a character who's fallen off, she now barely ties. I'm not gonna call her a tie hunter anymore, she fucking barely ties. Just shit. Um, this is a map dependent tie hunter, you bring instance warp detention on a smaller map, you uh, get a tie, you maybe get more, there is some room for win potential. This is the strongest tie hunter in the game, it's a tie hunter with the most win potential out of any tie hunter. Shit. Shit. This guy's good in rank, but he shit in tournament and this I me mean, assessing all these hunters in the tournament by the way same with the survivors this is specifically just tournament um assessment obviously in rank you can use the level but if we most people only care about tournament so i'm just talking about only tournament for now this person's a tie hunter this person's a tie hunter this person's like the reverse guard 26 you're using them big open maps instance warp detention you get a tie you maybe get more than a tie this is the worst time in the game. I've seen people say he's gone through round three viable after his buff. What? I don't know what fucking drugs you're on, but give me some of those because I fucking need them. There is absolutely no chance that Revelation and the Teleport Nerf combined in the same adjustment have made this guy round three viable. He is still the worst hunter in the game, in my opinion. Um, obviously, the Palette Break buff, you know, this Poaching buff, they make him feel nice. They make him feel a lot nicer to play. The teleport Nerf, I feel it, it's fucking horrible. This revelation thing is useless. When I say useless, I mean you can't get any use out of it because it's so fucking hard to activate. It's harder to activate than it is to um, fucking win the game normally. Same. So why the fuck would you use it, right? More on this in another video. I'm still making a video on this guy. This person fell off. She's kind of like a tie hunter, right? Um, she's not really used in tournaments. In rank, she's good, but like she's not really used in tournaments. So because it's just about tournaments, not a tournament hunter, let's just say she's shit, yeah? Because she's not mm -hmm. using tournaments, right? Okay. So this guy's a normal nothing hunter. In rank, obviously, he most likely will win. In tournaments, however, he's used for all or nothing. However, there are safer alternatives, which can get you a much safer chance of a win, or like the tie that you need, without having to risk it. So why the fuck would you play him, right? This person is just below Disciple in terms of Tie Hunter with um, win potential. It's Disciple, this guy, and Gamekeeper. They're like the big three Tie Hunters with win potential at the moment. Obviously, you got the um, second strongest win hunter. Or one, one of the two win hunters, sorry. You got one of the worst hunters in the game. Then you got the strongest hunter in the game. Gunkman's not yet available in tournament. However, I, me and several, in fact, most China and Japan tournament players I've seen are calling him stronger than an opera. Provided that the nerf doesn't nerf him too much, right? This was before the nerf got announced. We don't know what the nerf's going to be yet. Me as a hunter main and a goatman main, I think he's one of the most unhealthy characters in the game. This 14 energy cost secondary cage needs to be increased. Um, because that is far too low to be healthy. If they increase that energy cost, then it um, then this guy gets made a lot more healthy. Maybe he won't be as strong enough anymore, but he needs to be made more healthy. He's just fucking ridiculous. So now let's look at all the um, hunters who are viable. How many do we have? We have one. We have two. We have three. We have four. And we have five. If we want to talk about like actual strong hunters who are going to be used round one, round two, round three, keep in mind this person round one, this person round two. So it's between Nightwatch, Disciple, and Gamekeeper round three. Gamekeeper, I want to add. You don't fucking see him played anymore. So like, why is that gamekeeper round three? That's very loose, right? Gamekeeper round three not gonna happen. So it's usually between Nightwatch and Disciple, right? So that's like technically five, five at most, like strong hunters. Then obviously you've got um, this person, this person, this person, this person. You got like four like tie hunters ish, and then you got like Spider and um, Geisha. Over here, who are like kind of but not really. I'm not even going to count Spider and Geisha because I don't think they're strong. So you've got like four additional tie hunters, two of which are map dependent, three of which are map dependent. Sorry, because I thought about real. Three of which are map dependent. Mind you, kind of play them anyway, but like she's just a tie hunter. 
they got an all or nothing hunter who has never played because it's too risky, right? So you can see we've got strong characters on each side, we've got weaker characters on each side because the game is in a balanced meta. And so the way asymmetrical games work, right? So the uh, survivor side, there's four of them, obviously, they're always going, always, every single time, no matter how, what side the meta is, well, they're always going to have an edge over the hunter because they have the adv advantages of teamwork and communication to make up for their mistakes, right? And there's four of them, so they can work together to um, make it so any mistakes they make are less less um, detrimental, right? That's why survivors will always technically have a edge. However, in most asymmetrical games, the killer or the hunter faction will have strong, abil strong ability to make up for this. The hunters are stronger. We have some stronger hunters to um, make up for this in the meta. We will also know that the hunter side will all also have an edge of the urban survivors, like just a natural edge in every single game, because they are able to take advantage of survivor mistakes. There are four times as many people making mistakes, so that's four people to take advantage of. There will always be a weak link on the team. If you can identify the weak link, that gives you a much easier time. Um, if you're playing hunter against survivors a similar skill level to you, um, and like you, let's say you've played against them like 10 times, then most times you would tie those games, um, right? And obviously there'll be a few wins, a few losers, but most times you tie those games. Unless it's like an Ivy or an Opera Singer. Aside from that, like most times you tie those games, right? Um, but the, re the reason for this is because these, like, the Hunter faction will always have this edge of the survivors. If they didn't have the edge of the survivors, where the abilities were inherently stronger, so they were able to overcome the communication and teamwork aspect, then the game, all asymmetrical games will be survivor sided, right? Because you should never fucking look down on communication and teamwork. That is a really fucking important factor. That um, that is the real make or break of survivor teams, right? How well you can work together, how well you can discuss ideas, how well you can talk about what's happening, make split second adjustments to uh, your game plan, right? Um, hunters obviously have their uh, stronger abilities to make up for this. However, it doesn't make the game hunter sided. It gives hunters an edge to be more balanced, right? So we see we have strong hunters, right? Like Ivy seeing Ivy Opera Singer. We have the shit hunters who are never going to be taught at Bible unless they get good buffs. Um, I'm speaking about this guy in particular here because he's the worst hunter in the game, in my opinion. And the survivor side, you've got, you know, we've got weak characters, we've got shit characters. And then obviously, you go over to this page over here, and you've got like good balanced characters who are strong but balanced. I love this character, character design. You've got broken characters, you've got broken characters, you've got broken characters, right? You, We've got broken characters, we've got weak characters, and we've got characters who are decent and good. In So obviously decent and good would be Ty Hunter, bad characters would be hunters like Nightmare, survivors like, you know, Doctor and shit like that. And then obviously the strong characters, your opera singers, your IVs, your cheerleaders, puppeteers, antiquary and stuff like that, right? So we have a wide variety of balance, right? And that's good. We need more balance in this game. Core 4, heavily hunter sided. We didn't like that, that's bad. Cover 6, heavily survivor side, if we didn't like that, that's also bad. Cover 7, balance, we finally, hunters and survivors are winning and losing and getting ties a lot. We see Opera Singer getting 4 mans for the first time ever in Cover 7. We see Gamekeeper getting 4 mans on his best maps in Cover 7, right? Obviously Gamekeeper and Opera Singer being the two better hunters in Cover 7. Like, we, we, see, we see balance, this is good, I want the game to stay this way because it benefits literally every single person who plays the game that we have balance, right? If the game is one faction sided for too long, they will release more bullshit characters to counter that, right? Exhibit A, Antiquarian releasing after the Hunter sided Curve 4 and Hunter dominated Curve 5, right? I say Hunter dominated, Survivors did do well in Curve 5, however, Wheel was fairly broken. So Antiquarian released, Antiquarian Chain, revamped the entire meta. Obviously, you couldn't have Clark anymore. You couldn't use Dream Witch anymore. You couldn't use any of the Hunt anymore. You had Antiquarian Flywheel released to shift the meta from Hunter sided to Survivor sided, right? For Cover Six. And then we had the um, Survivor side meta for that time. And obviously, Nightwatch releases. He shakes up a little bit, but he ultimately, you know, he's a tie hunter. Then we got Opera Singer releasing. Release Opera Singer is broken. She needs to be released broken because we don't have any win hunters. So Release Opera Singer gets released. She's broken. That's good. For now, it makes um, it makes certain other hunters rise up to the meta because the survivor meta is now changing to adapt to Opera Singer. So now there's other survivors, no, there's other hunters who can now be played and played better, right? So Grace Opera Singer broken, that's good. Once once the meta started to stabilize a bit, she got her nerfs, that's good, that's fine. 
Ivy released because we need more than just one Wind Hunter. Ivy released Broken, she got nerfed like five fucking times. Uh, she's now a. Don't want to say balanced, obviously Ivy's still a stronger hunter. She's meant to be a strong hunter. That's that's the plan, right? She's meant to be a strong hunter, that's good. We need strong hunters, right? So Ivy's now strong, Op is now strong. We have people able to beat them, we've got people who lose them, you know, you tie to them. So now our hunter meta is fine, our survivor meta is fine. I say fine, it's an unstable balance, however it is still a balance. The balance is good, we like the balance, right? And um, that is that is basically what I wanted to address today. Um, obviously, I've said before this is this is a light-hearted video. I'm not trying to change people's opinions, which is why I'm not bringing in, like statistics or anything like that. This is just me ranting about it because I can. Um, obviously, if you're going to watch this, and um, I don't want you to take away from this that I'm trying to change your opinion. Keep your own opinion. That's fine. There are some opinions that are objectively wrong, such as Nightbeer being strong is objectively wrong. He's not. And Curry and Chile being weak. Again, objectively wrong, they're not weak. However, I'm not going to attack you for those opinions. I'm just going to say that objectively, from like the game, like the gameplay perspective and the perspective of quite literally every single player out there, that that's incorrect. However, that there, there's also opinions that the game is hunter sided. There's also opinions that the game is survivor sided, right? I respect both opinions. However, I don't believe that either of those is right. I believe the game is balanced. I'm, I'm a hunter man. I'm seeing this from both perspectives. From both rank hunter and survivor rank and tournament i'm trying to look at this with an open mind um i've gone into this um you know no pre-existing biases i've just looked at the game and i've gone it's balanced i like this we need more of this the game needs to stay balanced um ideally so we don't have any more like cover fours or cover sixes which one heavily one faction sided right and you know, obviously, obviously, people are going to disagree with me. That's fine. There's going to be people who agree with me. I, I support that. Thank you. There's going to be people who disagree with me. Um, there's going to be pe people who disagree with people who um, talk about their opinions. Right. The one of the reasons it took me so long to make this video is because I was scared that people were going to attack me for my opinions on um, the game. And well, I made it now because everyone's being attacked anyway, so I, I won't be the only one. But the issue with Knight's release is Knight was painted out to be a broken survivor in his character trailer. Everyone thought that, right? Even if you didn't want to make an opinion on it, you you still could recognise that he's got an overloaded kit and he's quite strong. Then they showed that he only had three uses of his item. It's like, right, okay, so he's not as broken as we thought. Still an overloaded kit, that's fine. Then some people like harassing others and saying like, oh, my, Knight needs to be broken. we are finally a broken character since... I think I've seen the statement floating around, um, finally a broken character since all the hunters since Clutch release have been broken. Um, I can count only three, that being Clark, Opera, Singer, and Ivy who have been broken, and all the survivors since then, um, to um, Farrah Lady, so obviously we've got a lot of strong survivors there, only 50% strong hunters, so I think that statement's wrong. But um, wrong as in objectively like factually speaking it's wrong uh however you can have your opinion you can think that obviously the game is on to side so i'm sorry that's fine but uh just keep in mind to not attack others over it you know it's just a game it's literally a children's game um pixels on a screen you know, all that shit. um so just you know, be respectful of others opinions if you're going to discuss them that's fine if you want to try and change people's opinions obviously bring up the relevant data and like all your facts to support your argument don't just say stuff like stop crying about it because that's not going to fucking help anyone, is it? Um, so, my issue is with this is that people have been attacked for their opinions. You can say that's wrong, but that's the fact people are getting. Like, it's a big situation right now in this community. People are like disagreeing with how strong the. Um, like, what side of the game is about the night and all that shit. I'm not going to release a video on night. This is like my last video addressing this specific topic, unless. Something happens that, like, I feel I need to address. Um, you know, it may do, it may not. I don't know. But I hope that I hope that anyone watching this video with an open mind is able to see my opinion, accept it as my opinion. You can disagree with my opinion; that's absolutely fine. Or you can agree; that's also absolutely fine. You can agree with some parts but disagree with others. Again, absolutely fine. Um, just please don't attack me over it. I'm saying that sincerely. I sound sarcastic, I always sound like that, but I genuinely sincerely, please don't attack me over my opinion. Um, please don't attack anyone in the, who is commenting on this video over their opinion. And...
yeah, just reflect people's opinions. I don't like this game's community. I think this game's community is bad, um, as it's been shown here. Uh, I really hope we can, you know, move past this and just try and become a good community because part of the reason why the scene's a joke while they're fucking everywhere else in the world is because how shit this community is. But I'll just, that's also a topic for another day, so I'm just going to leave it at that. Um, I hope you enjoyed watching this. It's mainly been me rambling. I know it's not been ideal, but sorry about that. Anyway, have a good day. Bye.